Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, my petty revenge on this entitled woman of the line. The second story, with the help of light and sound signals installed on the railroad, taught these petty offenders a lesson. The third story, I love slamming the door closed on corporate arrogance. The first story is, Goodish Samaritan versus Entitled Store Karen. This one's definitely my fault. I'm not denying that. It's just still a situation I found funny. So I'm in line with my nephew and neighbor kids at Target. I'm buying a few of those Mario Kart RCs. I bought one for myself because I collect that kind of stuff. I have both Mario and Luigi, and I've had a hard time keeping my nephew and the neighbor's kids from trying to touch it, as I haven't taken it out of the package. Yes, I'm that dude. So, I'm buying four of them. They only had Mario. Sadness. One for each of them and one for myself to take out of the box to play with. In line in front of us is the cutest little girl with hazel brown eyes and curly hair that her mama or someone must have spent forever on. I hope I never have a daughter because doing little girl's hair, especially black or mixed girls, seems like a skill that requires talent. It ain't long until the little girls figure out they go to the same school and are just in different classes. The other child, who I will call Moana, because she was decked out in Moana gear, was a year older. I started talking to the dad as we waited, about football stuff, and made the joke about the hair. Finding out that he does their hair, he has another daughter not present who's older after his wife died. Gave the man mad respect. Eventually, little Beth asks if Moana can come play with us and Moana asks her dad. He shrugs and says that they had plans. He was trying to watch the game later that day at BW3s, and he didn't want to impose. She commenced to begging and he looks at me and I'm like, hey, we're watching the game later too and I'm doing some grilling. If he wants to stop by, the kids can have a play date. My house all vaccinated and whatnot and we got masks and stuff. He tells me he's vaccinated as well as he's a nurse. I must have cracked a smile because he made a joke about there being plenty of male nurses, but no one finds their outfits sexy. Guess I should give him a name for this so let's call him Jason, because he looks like Jason Kidd if Jason Kidd was 10 shades darker. Beth and Moana then begin talking about the Mario Karts and how it'll be fun, and Moana of course doesn't have one. Moana asks if she can get one, but Jason says he didn't have the money to buy them one, so I'm like they're just 40 bucks, so I send Falcon back to get two more. Jason says I don't have to do that and I'm like nah it'll be fun. Besides, I spent most of the morning building a track on my backyard. We got heated pads under the bricks on the area around the fire pit, a nice little enclosure to keep little people and the toys from it, and it was warm enough so I decided I'd take out some SH and a little project with Falcon and Andy. All is well until I hear behind me, well if you're just giving away toys can you grab one for my son? I turn in line and maybe two spaces behind us is this woman with her son, who looks to be about 14. He's on his phone with his earbuds on with that look on his face. I politely say, sorry ma'am, I'm all tapped out. This was my charitable contribution to my gremlin's happiness, I said, gesturing to Beth. I turn around and Jason shrugs. I think it's over for a second. Then I hear her scoff. Oh, so you're just going to get them something free, but when I ask, it's can't help you? Didn't they ever tell you that it isn't right if you don't have enough for the whole class? Now, I'm aware that I am responsible here. I kind of advertised my willingness to spend money on a stranger. I get that, but that's my choice. It's my money. And technically, this is an investment in Beth's happiness because COVID has been really killer for her. She's been around us a lot, but being around her brothers and Andy all the time ain't exactly been fun for a girl. This little impromptu playdate seems very fortuitous to me, and I'm doing that. I kindly turn and tell her, hey, the kids know each other and they're going to go hang out. I point to Jason and say that he may be new to me, but these two aren't new to each other. She gets mad and goes, oh, I know what this is. It's because I'm white. And I look at her like, really? Jason looks at her like, really? And several other people turn and look at her. I then turn and look at her son, who is curly-haired, mocha-skinned, obviously that daddy is black. No doubts in my mind, so I'm sure I'm going to hear the, well, I'll have you know my husband is black. I want to say something, but Andy beats me to it. Are you serious, lady? Like she didn't see them. My nephew Andy is white. Beth and Falcon are mixed, but look white enough. Their mother is Native American, but they take after their dad, God rest his soul. Who's the prototypical white guy? Blonde, blue eyes, pale skin, even had the dimples in his cheeks. Was an awesome dude, sorely missed. Point is, I obviously do not have an aversion to white people. She starts to throw a hissy fit, 
and tells Andy that he's not allowed to take that tone with her, she's an adult. Andy, who sat there with me while I binge-watched DBZ Abridged, does his best Gohan impression and says, no, no you are not. She then starts demonstrating, getting loud, waving her arms, trying to get other people involved. I see her son getting annoyed as F, like not this SH again. He looks so embarrassed. Eventually, it's Jason's turn at the register and this woman is still going. We're ignoring her. Thankfully, she's now into it with other people in the line who dared to ask her to act her age. Falcon returns with other Mario Karts and he tells me that we're lucky there was only three left. I asked if there was still one on the shelf. He says yes and I told him to go get it. Jason looks at me. Don't do it, because he thinks I'm just going to get this woman what she wants. But he just met me. He doesn't know I'm super petty about this kind of thing. There's one other child in line, a little Hispanic boy wearing a Mario shirt. While Jason's checking out, Sun finally has enough and explodes. Come on, Mom, you always do this. Can you not be a Karen? This is the Christmas party all over again. That's why Janet, not what he said can't remember, doesn't like going shopping with you no more. She's taken aback and gives him the don't talk to me like that I'm your mother and all of this. And he just puts his earbuds back on and walks to the door. She's super mad, looks at me and goes, are you happy now? And I'm like, not yet. She gives me a mean mug because I got no poker face. Nothing but an SH eating grin. When it's my turn, I buy all that SH, along with the new one Falcon brought, and ask for it to be in a separate bag. Then I walk past her with it in hand, step close enough for her to think I'm going to give it to her, hand it to the mother with the little boy and say, I'm sorry you and your child had to experience that. I hope the rest of your day is great. I was expecting a little modesty, a little oh no, I can't accept that. But the lady seemed to know exactly what I was about. She gave the other an SH eating grin and was like, thank you, you're too kind. Bless you, sir. I mean, really hamming it up. The line laughed, the cashier laughed, and that white lady was no longer white. She turned so red I thought she might explode. I walked past her and me and Jason laughed about it. We hung out that day and we've hung out a few times since. Little Beth's thrilled she gets to play with an actual girl, and Jason and Sissy, Beth's mom, are getting along too. So I might be playing a bit of a matchmaker there. So far though, every time we get together we do retell this little story, and we all had a blast running the RCs around the cart. I know most people find stories where you get mad and cuss folks out entertaining, but I prefer to retaliate in my own way. The second story is when the RCO gets bored, or why I can't be left to my own devices. It was time when I worked as an RCO. RCO is short for Remote Control Operator. Basically, it's a type of a locomotive engineer, but we use a remote control pack to control the train. Only used for switching and yard purposes though, never on the main line. I'd been working at the mill for a good six months when the locomotive got sidelined due to a minor accident. Well, not minor, but no one was hurt. It did end up being kind of funny too, but I digress. Wanting to consolidate things into a cheaper system, the company picked up a used shuttle wagon truck, essentially a locomotive that could also drive on the roads with rubber tires. I tended to work nights and found that unlike the locomotive, this thing made switching very easy. So it wasn't uncommon for me to have long moments where I was bored out of my mind while waiting for the hoppers or tank cars to be loaded or unloaded. This would prove to result in some very interesting escapades, including several parking tickets, and one young man's car trying to climb its way up a tree. That's the story I'm about to relate. So one summer night I'm sitting in the cab when I get a call to take a string of six cars out to the interchange. I couple up and dutifully trundle my way down the mile and a half long siding to reach the small interchange yard we had with the local railroad. About halfway down I notice this car parked on the private access road. Honestly, I didn't think much of it. It happened from time to time that people would get lost and end up on our little road. Typically, it only took them a few moments before they sorted out where they were and headed off property. It takes me a good half hour to tie down the cars, set the brakes and then use the gravel pad. Really just an old out of use crossing to raise the rail wheels and get set up for road travel. Bouncing back down the access road, I discovered that the car is still there and it's blocking my path. That's when I hit upon an idea. I'm bored and I wanna have some fun. This will be fun. It'll also be mean, but it's still fun. I quickly kill the road lamps and pull up within 20 feet or so from the front bumper of the car. Waiting a moment, I flick the train lights on, turn them on high beam, and rev the engine while the wagon's in neutral, all the while giving the train horn a long honk. The light fills the interior of the car, and I have a perfect view of what's going on. I see one of the local teens look up, his eyes the size of saucers. Some girl's head comes up and looks up, her mouth open in a wide scream. The next thing I see is the car suddenly power itself full speed in reverse, jump the ditch at the side of the access road, and try to climb one of the trees in reverse along that side of the ditch. The kid is freaking out at this point while I'm laughing my A off in the cab. 
Next few hours were spent talking with the local police, who found the whole deal rather funny. While the teen swore up and down that his mother was going to kill him, since he'd taken the car without telling her. I also got the impression that his was very scared at the sudden sight, while he was thanking me profusely for managing to stop the train before it hit him. I never told him the truth. My bosses end up calling me on the carpet for this one, noting that while my method of dealing with trespassers was effective, they'd rather I just stuck to calling the local PD out to deal with it, as opposed to taking things into my own hands. The third story is... New Job, New Movement I've finally landed a new job, and I suppose I should shut up and toe the line, but I'm not going to. I got hired as a security guard for a big security contractor for $11 an hour. I'm sitting here for 15 minute break from a new employee orientation, and I've already endeared myself to my new masters. It's a good thing they need me more than I need them. They tipped their hand but hiring me without an interview. They told us we would be getting a corporate email address. Initially I thought that it was pretty cool that even the lowest folks get addresses. Well, we were told we would be expected to set up the email on our smartphones. I sighed in frustration and decided to roll through the setup until I reached the point that I would be basically giving the company carte blanche access to wipe my phone at any time and possibly read my personal information. I raised my hand and politely objected to this, read what my screen said and a few others said, oh, no way. I asked if the company was going to pay us for part of our cell phone bill. The poor orientation leader wanted to dance around this question. I knew the decisions were made above her pay grade. I respectfully refused to set up the email. The others followed me. I started a movement. When the leader said we could lose our jobs if we miss important information, someone else chimed in by saying, then give us a computer at our site for us to check out email. A few others started saying that maybe we should all just walk out. The orientation leader clearly flustered called operations manager in. We called his bluff as well. When he was initially belligerent, we all got up to walk out and said politely we don't like being spoken to that way. 25 people to lose in one morning would be too much for any branch office to lose in a day. We had the dude bent around a barrel. In short, we forced him to sign an agreement to pay us an additional $30 tax-free as compensation. For us using our personal property. I'm on a roll so I said some of us are not on unlimited plans. Shouldn't you compensate us for potential overages? So he increased it to 45. We each have a copy with his signature. Edit. I found an app to override the system policy, allowing the company's IT people to access anything. And the last story is, she must have thought it was a good idea at the time. Delivered home heating oil for my dad for many years. We did not do furnace or boiler work. We were not licensed to do furnace or boiler work. If you ran so low on fuel your pilot went out, that was on you to get it relit. Our policy was if you didn't have an account set up, you paid in cash upon delivery. If you had a fuel voucher you needed to tell us before delivery, because we had to verify the voucher with the issuing agency, and this was clearly stated on the voucher itself, and clearly stated when the order was placed. I do a delivery to a first-timer, and go in to get payment, expecting cash or a check. Get hit with, you aren't going to relight my furnace? After a long explanation on my part, and much haranguing on their part, they try to play the I know the owner card, and tell me they're going to have me fired. Then I shifted back to payment and they handed me the voucher. I told them I can't take the voucher because it has not been verified and I needed cash or a check. This started the I know the owner again, that they were going to have me fired before I got back to the shop. Yeah, I really think that will happen, lady. Now my father went by his middle name professionally, but anyone who knew him knew his actual first name, so I asked what's the owner's name. They responded with his middle name. I asked are you sure and they doubled down on how they knew him for years and knew his family. I then asked what are his kids' names. That stopped them in their tracks. I showed her my dad's name on the bill and pointed out the last name. I then showed her my ID and said the last names match. I need cash or a check. They tell me they only have the voucher. I tell them I have to follow the agency's protocol for vouchers and it needs to be approved before delivery or they won't pay the voucher and we're not giving them their fuel oil. We now have two options. They pay me in cash or a check. I call the police for theft of service. Your choice. They came up with cash. I got the you're a horrible company in person spiel as I was leaving and the I'm never going to use you again spiel too. Now there are only three companies that do home fuel in that community. I red flagged the name and address in our book and called the other two companies to find out they've already been flagged as no deliver in their books for the same reason. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you liked it don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.